prayer can get you into trouble. Did you know that? I'm guessing you remember the story from the Old Testament about Daniel uh, in the lion's den. The story, you remember when King Darius had Daniel tossed into the den with lions, but then the morning came around and those hungry lions had been were purring like kittens in his lap. Maybe you don't remember the reason that Daniel got tossed into the lion's den. It was because he got caught praying in his home. He had already set himself up uh, and apart in the eyes of the king as both an interpreter of dreams and the best administrator in the kingdom. He was diligent and honest and reliable. And some of the other appointees of the administration were not were a lot more ambitious and a lot less good. And they didn't like Daniel succeeding. So this is what happened. I wanna share with you a reading from Daniel 6, 6 through 11. The presidents and the satraps conspired and came to the king and said, O King Darius, live forever. And all the presidents of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors all agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an interdict that whoever prays to anyone, divine or human, for 30 days, except to you, O king, shall be thrown into a den of lions. Now, O king, establish the interdict and sign the document so that it cannot be changed, according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Then King Darius signed the document and the interdict. Now, although Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he continued to go to his house, which had a window in its upper room toward Jerusalem, and to get down on his knees three times a day and pray to his God and praise him, just as he had previously done. The conspirators came and found Daniel praying and seeking God mercy before his God. We're talking about sacred spaces, and here is Daniel in his house. Daniel goes down on his knees three times a day to pray to God, to praise him, and the conspirators found him seeking God's mercy. You know, last week we thought about what it might look like to set up a space in your home that might be your prayer corner or closet or chair or wherever you'll go to pray. Maybe a window like Daniel facing Jerusalem, facing the east to the rising sun. Think for a minute this morning about Daniel's rhythm of prayer. As a person who insists on three meals a day, I'm struck by how he prays three times a day, reminding me of Jesus who quotes Deuteronomy and saying that we do not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. The earliest Christians, you know, were taught to pray the Lord's prayer three times a day. And the church teaches us how to pray the hours that is the divine hours with certain prayers at 2, 5, 6, and 9 a.m., noon, 3, and 6 p.m., and then just before bed. What would a daily rhythm of prayer look like for you? I would be glad to talk with anyone about any of those that I've mentioned. I used to think, you know, parents, maybe you think about praying the divine hours of when your kids change classes in school. If you're not sure where to start, though, What if you started with what the earliest Christians were doing? Praying the Lord's Prayer three times a day, slowly, (laughs) and with all the intent and heart that you can. But as you do, keep in mind that praying might get you into trouble. That's what happens when we open our hearts to the heart of God. God just might get us into trouble, good trouble like John Lewis used to say. Peace be with you. Amen.